Welcome back, everyone, to Old World Blues, the A to Z series which we're playing in the Northern Continents. Last time, we've expanded, we took over Trade Node, and now we're still struggling against the last readout. But another home loss we must talk about. With the Papa Kong loss, it's fall to Regis to decide the Great Khan's course. <coughs> With enemies on all sides and a number of non combatants and wounded to care for, he made the heavy decision to leave the Mojave Wasteland. Revenge and the lust for it weighed too heavily on some of the Great Khans, and a few chose to seek their fortune on their own, prompting another party in the ways. Regis, for his part, however, knew that seeking vengeance would be the death of them all, and discarded the idea. Remembering an old story from Papa mentioning of a group of new Khans who had struck out of their own long ago after the fall of Darien. The Great Khans headed north in hopes of finding their long-lost cousins. They could think of no better course, with both east and west growing more and more dangerous. The journey was a tough one, with the travelers forced to dig up long, stale rumors and scrabble for supplies the whole way. They had a few towns where they forced to fight as well, as the wasteland and its often hostile inhabitants took its toll on them. By the end of it, Regis felt... What? Fed up. They're still struggling here, too. If we move, well, they're going to attack us really quite viciously, in all honesty. Um... So we gotta continue expanding if we can, but I don't think we have enemy air tech, unfortunately. We're still working on our land doctrine. We should probably grab some saws. Um, if you wanna need this one, please go ahead. As well as industrial means. And as well as industrial capacities. You now push for exponential growth in such trouble towns will lead us to better days. Which would be great. So we're working on our special forces and whatnot. Uh huh. And the call of survivors, if you do this again, please go ahead. A fortunate reunion. I'm glad and Neston, along with a number of wars, made their way to the border. Scouts had reported a large group, many armed, approaching Khan territory. The scouts had kept their distance on Amgalan's orders, instructed to stay as far away as possible while still keeping the travelers in sight. The old chief had an odd feeling about it all, feeling strangely excited. The rest of his people were ready for a fight and were already taking up defensive positions if it came down to it, but Amgalan had every intention of asking questions first. He biked up onto an old ridge overlooking the trail, Aston clinging behind and waited for the new arrivals to approach. They were aware as they came, walking slowly but openly, clearly aware of some kind of welcoming parting was awaiting them. It was a large group of people, including adults and children alike, wearing mostly various leathers and scavenged clothing and many carrying weapons. They kept their arms at their sides and backs, however, a detail that Anglan did not fail to notice. Once they were within earshot, Anglan called out, Who are you? So many walking into the land of the Khans. The response was an unexpected one. We are the Khans. A fortunate reunion still. Three days later, Regis sat by the fire with Melissa, Jack, and Diane. Some of the people he trusted the most after the long exodus north. They had actually managed to find the long lost cousins after the, and they'd been quick to welcome the great cons of the Mojave after an initial period of intense and surprise questioning. Many of the northern cons had seemed impressed by the tales of their southern counterparts and happy for the sudden reunion, though Regis wasn't sure what to make of it yet. The conversation inevitably turned towards their hosts. That Amgali guy seems nice, Jack offered, his arm draped around Diane as they passed back and forth a cigarette. A bit too nice both Melissa and Diane Canner almost in unison. He still looks pretty buff, but it could Chuck me pretty far. Better Zess and Lady Kid too. Jack shrugged. I do like her, Melissa said, smirking as she watched a fire dance. Hey, Regis, you know how I get the idea of a lot of these guys want a new boss? Why not you? Regis didn't answer right away, considering her words. It was true that some of the cons they met seemed to have a little love for their soft spoken chief. That didn't mean he necessarily wanted to be a chief himself. Finally, he just broke the quiet with a simple, maybe. Mojave cons fleet of Wyoming, becoming available as advisors and unit leaders. Ooh. Are we getting more unit leaders? Advisors? And of course, this would. Benefit as, as well. I do want to attack, but I don't think we'll be very successful at it. That'll definitely help us out. Just frustrations. Phileas stormed an Amglan's tent unprompted. What do you mean that they, they call themselves the Great Cons, huh? It seems like they're just a bunch of great crapheads. She threw her hands up angrily. They don't listen to us. They chew up booze like it's a gosh darn sport and make the entire camp smell like a lab. What are we going to do about it, then, Mom Galan? He shrugged in faint agreement. We must earn the respect. They don't fully understand that we are their family yet. Our eyes twitched. We gave them somewhere to go. Isn't that enough? Now they're up here running our crap into the ground and we're supposed to just accept that? Hearing what they've been through, I don't think I blame them, Mom Galan rested his chin on his hand. We all get restless in times of strife. We just have to be there for them and guide their hand. But this isn't just restlessness, Mom Galan. It's recklessness. They're self destructive. They want blood and I don't think they'll stop until they get it. Many of us do, just look at Essen, or even myself, Anglan said, watching her expression turn into one of surprise. He continued, It's human nature to crave vengeance, really. When I was younger, I hunted the men who killed my mother, an NCO ranger, and I cut his sword out with, his, with her knife. I thought I'd feel better for her, or tougher, if you can't believe it, he stared through her. I never felt as powerless and lonely as when I watched him bleed out. Revenge, anger, they both divorced the mind from the body. They take your character and make you into a shell. His eyes lit with tears. I won't let them go through that. It took Phileia a moment to gather herself. Then you know what? This is bad, Angolan. There's a whole new set of cons who haven't changed like we have. 
I know that, he sighed, placing his hand on her shoulder. Regis and his people are good. If they weren't, I wouldn't have let them come here. He's off in his gaze, hushing his words. We can understand them, be there for them without agreeing with them. She took a deeper breath, eyeing with concern. I just want you to think about it, okay? He nodded. She left him to his thoughts. Steady she goes. Uh-huh. Spec Ops, 20 combo width. Uh, we gotta wait for the fire teams to throw on there, too. Guys are still not making any yet. Uh-huh. Anyone here? Let him cook. Uh, they're recovering it. Oh, and they're warting now too. Oh, would you look at that. You never know how things might end up. I figured something like this would happen. And go in. That will be great. Get that there. More research speed, please. There you go. Took forever to get to this point, but that's all right. You know what? I want you to stop. And I want them to take this territory out so we get all that territory for free. Two warriors. Most open fire, spray of bullets, shredding the wings of an oncoming blood bug and crashing it to the grass. She finished it with a boot to the head while to her flank, Essence swung her axe in a wide stroke that split the head of another of the monstrous insects. The noises aroused the rest of the nest had volunteered to clear out, and they were soon embroiled in a short but fierce battle, with each watching the other's backs. They had journeyed out into the wilds together, chasing stories of an insect in the nest that had grown out of hand and starting to attacking hunters in the area and getting to know each other until the trail. Each found they enjoyed the other's confidence and company, and the two but felt like let work. It was Melissa who eventually found the nest itself, encountered the monsters, and both had agreed to tackle it head on without delay. When it was over, both were unscathed and surrounded by blood bug corpses, each regarding the other's handiwork with respect. Their teamwork had been easy and natural, with Melissa calling out targets and Essen intercepting any that threatened to pass through gunfire. No more blood for those bugs, Essen dryly remarked as she wiped her blade clean. The other woman laughed at the unexpected joke and slapped her on the back good-naturedly. We should do it again sometime. Uh, may I try command, ancient tactics, dreamer heart. Oh, that's pretty good. Melissa Lewis, good recon, infantry attack and defense. I like that a lot. I'll miss Dad and Papa, but honestly, between House and the NCR, the Mojave kind of suck. I think we've got a good thing going here. Melissa's a young woman, unbowed by the wasteland, despite having faced her fair share of battles and strife. The daughter of a Khan and a man of the NCR. She went through the tough initiations of the Great Khans and is not a proud and loyal member. In the time since she's been a raider, a hunter, a courier, a scout, a warrior, what other Great Khans you needed her to be? Melissa's heart is sparked by chances for glory, and she has some dreams of greatness both for her and the rest of the Khans. Now the Mojave and her father are far behind her to the south, and she has a new land to scope out in Rome. Among the northern Khan, she's already jockeys for a position among the warband leaders, and has found a kindred spirit in the fiery Essen. She would never turn on Regis after he led the way north, but as long as she gets a chance to prove her skill and reach for greatness, she doesn't much care of who's in charge. There you go. Reclamation, and then we'll continue our assault. Casper next. Very nice. Pushing forward. Come on, take the scrapyard. I know you want it. Spec ops. And saws. Good. They might come for us though. Come on. Structure more stability would be great. Uh, that's fine, for round two. Cotton tools. Nice stuff. Good stuff. Come on.
the crossroads. Ever since arriving in old Wyoming, the Khans and Amglan have suffered from something of an identity crisis. This crisis is put into a sharper relief by the rival regents and the great Khans of the Mojave. It has fallen to Amglan to call together the Khans' greatest and most influential members to discuss what comes next and how to move forward. Some have been drawn. <coughs> there are times where those who believe in Amglan's vision of settling down in peace alongside the followers of the apocalypse. Folks tired of blood and going it alone, who wish for comfort and stability. They would see Amglan's role not just preserved, but expanded so his authority is unquestioned. Some have been drawn to Essen, captivated by our talk of guarding against further disasters through overwhelming strength and impressed by our conviction. These followers wish for a return to glory and even revenge against a harsh wasteland. They see her raised to the top and speak of the kind of con uh, conate old Darien would have only dreamed of. But there are those who wish for no great changes at all. They want to raid, live, and continue to live on as the cons always have. The great cons in particular regents have become, become examples for the traditionalists to rally around. I know that it may be time to give regents a greater position of honor amongst the cons as a man who is also worthy of leadership. At the end of the night, long, night, long meeting was decided. The cons won glory. Uh, if you do this again, please go ahead. Yay. So now we have everything on the right here. Lighting the fires. Fire council. If they have been defeated, instead triggers an event to reach out to the survivors. Huh. Oh, I want the horsemen, yeah. Exiles just like us. If we succeed in defeating MacArthur, we'll give the Enclave lands to the Jacksons as the rightful lands of the family. The Unbroken. Wrath of the Midday. Son of Mal's Martial Republic. Well, Hark, Sunborn, and Sunbreaker. While well, Sungazers consisted mostly of Sunborn, their instances were passing nomads who would be welcomed to the tribe. Those who passed the uh, scorched trials of long days sitting on cliff sides with little food or water were monikered sunbreakers. To Essen, every kind under her is a sunbreaker, and with that she passes on to old traditions. So we can't do this one. Con of cons. The con of cons. Oh, we'll get this one eventually. The time of debate and dispute is over. The cons have spoken loud and clear in support of the new path. While today is only the beginning of what has come, it marks an important date nonetheless. A toast. More political power, monthly population, great. And a good research slot. And then paid in kind. Nice, good stuff. Please, just kill them off. I'm really disappointed how long it's taking for this, this to happen. There you go. Boom. 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 Infantry, eh? Major prosperity. <coughs> We've had a lot of hard times, no one can deny that, whether it's kind of the north or south. Those times have much to be coming to an end, though, now. We're stronger than we ever were, and it's time to enjoy it. You can. Stanford's to be aggressive. Yay! This might put us in war with the other people, too, so. Exactly what we want. Time of celebration. In the recent years, the Khans had rarely much cause for celebration, whether they dwelt in the north or the south thanks to the long years of travel and frequent deprivation. Times have changed, however, and with them the Khans' fortunes. The number uh, had certainly grown, food stores were healthy, and they could even be considered wealthy now. Even more important, however, the long divide between the distant cousins had been closed, and the Khans were now one tribe, even if tragedy had set the at the event in motion. With that reunion in mind, comes a new certainty in course. Oh, look at this. Essence, simply aggressive, a true Khanate leader. Great. It was Regis who suggested a feast in celebration to let everyone's hair down, which had quickly grown into a several day festival across Khan territory. Hatches were buried, and new loves were sparked, and chems and boots flowed freely. It got a bit out of control by the end, with the cleanup taking several more days, but all agreed it had become well worth it. All through the festival, the most toasts were dedicated to Essen. Cool. Let him cook. I like that one. Uh, Justine. We still have that spear. That's not bad. Business con. Uh, passive caps, Diane. 
Annette Bailey, domesticated operative. Wall painter. It's not bad either. Anyone else have it? Old softy. A tinker. -er -er -er. That's not bad to have either, but. I have an on. This very special individual gets what they'd have dreamed of, and I cannot be and I'm not very special. I have enough of what I need, Albert, and I'll care for my people as I always did, and that will not change. The years have been gun to finally make their weight felt on Amglon's formerly sturdy shoulders. His dreams of teaching the Khans a new way of life are spent now, surrendered in the face of his kin wishing to follow another. They're still his people, however, and nothing could change that. So he wakes every morning does what he can, whether the ministering of medicine, tutoring the next generation of Khans, or acting as a liaison. Those who end up subject to the Khan of Khans will. Draws another day after all, and it could be still better than today. Well, as long as he's okay with it. And the painting kind. We're the masters of the land now, and that means we get a cut of whatever action goes down in it. Call it tribute, taxes, actually screw taxes, call it teeth. Feature of the Khan. Through it all, the Khans of Wyoming become the last bastion of the culture. And so it's come to decide whether we should set our down our deepest roots. Level will always be home. Casper is especially economically powerful. I'm okay with Casper. New us, new capital. That's right. Another proposal. Ezekiel's home in Casper for the first time in many months. Come a calling on Miss Annette Bailey. The Bailey estate had long since been repaired, though the South was considerably fewer in number. He tipped his hat towards the grave of Augustus and walked inside where Annette was quick to emerge and embrace him. Exchanged more than one kiss and greeting before Ezekiel pulled back a bit to speak. Been hearing good things, Annie? Been seeing out of trouble? She scoffed and rolled her eyes a bit. I haven't cheated your father, if that's what you mean, much. He knew better than to say that the cons were a boss too, instead telling her, Got a thing or two for you, then. First he produced a fine sundress and pale lavender, reclaimed from a faraway pre-war store he discovered on a scouting trip. And its eyes gleamed as she looked at it over, but the gift was quickly forgotten when she looked up to see Ezekiel down on one knee. She was incredulous, even more so when he held out his cow's tan to present her with a ring. Her face softened as she looked into his one eye. Really do get to love yourself, love to get yourself into trouble, don't you, Z? He responded with a winning smile and a shrug, waiting for her answer. She smiled back to and said to him, "I suppose I do owe you, don't I?" Cool. Well, she's still alive for now. For now. Uh, better sending bonuses because I'm sure we could use that manpower. I'll grab some of this. That'd be nice. Um, I want to spice soon even more after this one as well. Ah, there they go. So you finally got him, eh? Let's see how we can stand up to these guys. <coughs> it's not going to be pretty, but we'll do whatever we can here. Tribal nation, huh? Armor hardening is good. Warrior equipment, yes please. Because even though we're part of Wyoming, we're really expanding into Nebraska and whatnot now. Be aggressive. Get in there. Serious air experience now. Um, what is this? Side hustle? 
I'm glad it asked me thrice before why would you do this. I held his gaze steadily. Even with his newfound strife between us, I still love him like my father and I told him, because the week had it coming. When families are the last, only then are we safe. Power armor divisions, eh? That's certainly not quite ideal. Get in there. Go. Looks more dangerous. I like that. Pain Jalair. Thunder War Chief. Breaking the speed is pretty nice. We have extended words to share about Essen as she is a relatively new member of the Khans herself. She's made a steady, steadfast reputation of Armgalan's side, expressing disinterest in what she perceives as stagnation in the favor of the conquest befitting of the Khanate. But Regis. The Khans have been great in the past, and I know they'll be great again no matter what we call ourselves. We're not going to get knocked down again. It's almost as if it's a relief to the man who looked up to the mantle of leadership in a time of crisis and it set it back down. Though, the, though those he led through the wasteland will always hold a special place in, of honor, the cons of North and South are already beginning to mix and mingle under new leadership. Now Regis himself settles in a familiar and comfortable role, serving as an advisor, strategist, and lieutenant for his new chief. He'll keep things under control and make certain that those cons who escape bitter springs don't get the short end of the stick. Get more defense, get more stability, get more great things like that. Ours to the state. Wrath of Midday. As a commander of Undram Golan, Essen had faced her fair share of scrutiny, and now as a leader of those concerned voices rise again. She has much more power to much more to prove, and even greater pull of anger. The Khans will have to listen, understand or leave, simple as. Now we're struggling here, but really the main goal is for us to just encircle them. Or encircle take other victory points. Oh, look at that, we got the fort. It's nice. Good job, guys. Hey, we got him. You don't always have to win every battle. But you gotta take their VPs. Two. A little more manpower is nice as well. Maybe a little more militia training would benefit us as well, yes. I hope so. Because that's what we're going to go with. Wrath of Midday. Bite the dust. Steel wheels. Oh, oh crap! I want to go this way. Oopsie. Crap. Well, I might just force this through. Oh, why did I click on that? Oh, I'm so dumb. I make mistakes sometimes. My fault. The better way. With our auto care techniques, we have learned to make better accommodations for to cross the board. Now our factories will be able to supply and even work better with the materials. I want ponies. Oh, memory raiders. Ranger of the Conate. Guerrilla Warfare. Oh, we're going down asymmetric anyways.
Oh, well, I guess not researchable. So, when do you get horses? Do you, can you get horses? Hmm. Right here, duh. We'll see. Light in the fires, the cons are more than capable of standing alone, but even the strongest war benefits from companionship. We can look to those neighbors who have a similar spirit and invite them to share a fire in each other's burdens. Uh, an army of raiders. The greatest failures weren't at the hands of incompetence or lack of organization or any high minded nonsense like that. The worst thing to plague our forces was like a strength, raw power. But who knows more about strength than those future rejects of the Waste Sam? Those brutal wars can that society forgot to scoop up during its rebirth? There we go. Come join our fire. The Nitsitapi folk are honest and proud of their own history of trials. The kind of people we can respect and understand. They are welcome to join the council they wish. Cool. Better dynamite will help us out. Let time go on. Can we core anything yet? Dead man's junction. Core the state. Hurts the infrastructure a little bit, and I got some stuff from that. Should be nice. Yep, that would be good. Palpitations are nice. Good, good, good. Army Raiders. From boys to men. Uh, guerrilla warfare. We don't have to meet the enemy in the field, nor do we have to honor any supposed rules of war. No. We'll make crossing our turf like crawling across a pile of nails. Death by a thousand cuts. Uh, a war of never-ending attrition. Drugged up partisans around every corner. Ha! That'll be freaking beautiful. It better be. Starting to run out of manpower. I would like to core them more, but we'll have to wait and see. Far Sun? We're not going to win everywhere, but we're doing some pretty decent damage overall. Good stuff. Good. Does it cut off and died immediately, pretty much. Ideal. Quite ideal. Well, they're literally just going to die there. Very nice. Better way. Ah, my kind of horse. The horse is an animal and familiar to us outside of the legends of yore. While we certainly don't come from a legacy of animal husbandry, we stand to benefit immensely if the horses can be integrated into our own methods of life and war. I'm going to use Khan's commands if I can't get that other route, because I want that benefit for us. The other hunters. The child of Standing Rock has invited us to join an alliance to carve up the north between us. Under the terms of this proposal, we shall go west, they shall go north, and together we'll fight a more forge a mighty empire. Shall we pursue this plan? You understand. So now we're in a faction. We're a fire council. Oh no. Okay, they didn't want that. Now so be it then. Oh, they're dead. Good. Good, good. Destroy that division, nice. Good stuff. Iconic for a horse. Ideal. Uh, aliens, horsemen. 
arm your hand or lose it. <clears throat> Essence and insistence of prepare for war, vague as it is. I draw both their termination and fear in the hearts of the cons. For every hand, a weapon, or for every weapon, a life. Good. Organized military. Nice, nice, nice. Build even faster. This guy just found nothing. But then what are you doing here? Excellent. Good. Nebraska is pretty eating up Nebraska like crazy right now. Great. Any more? Oh, bring another up, perhaps. Hmm. Metal men, the fathers. The forefathers are strange, perhaps, as their religion is stranger, but if they're nothing enough, they're not straightforward. As long as they're allowed access to the gods of Rushmore, they should make for trustworthy allies. Well, that might be a little difficult. The sisters of steel is pretty thick, unfortunately. If they do go over to Standing Rock, we might try to take them out ourselves. Lone Tree might be the way we are taking them out. Of course, they're fighting over a river to get over here, too, so that's why we're struggling quite a bit. And now that we pushed over, we should do okay. Maybe not great, but at the very least, okay. The call the crow. Roger sat around the campfire, ready to meet with a man from the dead tribe. Dressed in strange garb, what most caught his eye was the man's hair. Intricate weaves and what looked like words flowing from every strand. Roger invited the man to sit with him. His name was Booth Crow, and he had acted as a father for those who worshipped the faces of Rushmore. The man sat and asked, I assume you're the only one the one they call the Regis? I've heard much about your tribe. Some good and some bad. Regis nodded, offering Crow a drink. He could decline, not fully trust in the Khan. Red just shrugged before replying, I heard what happened to your tribe. The Khans know the pain of losing home and family. I can tell you're not quick to trust me, though, so go ahead and speak your mind. Crow looked over to Red, just unsure of both his demeanor and his goals. A short pause, and he spoke. You are the same name of the some of the greatest monsters in history. You remember speak of your tribe's bloodthirsty history and actions, and that you are not to be trusted. I've heard that there is more to you, however, and that you seek friends. Tell me, Red, do you seek friendship with me? I do. I've heard stories of a wise man who leads warriors well. I respect that. When a tribe fell, I assumed you did too. But now that you're here, I'd offer you a place with us, just like us. You can come back from a fall. What do you say? Very well. Only for vengeance. Booth Crow. Do we want Booth Crow? A cultural advisor. Oh. Ooh, political power gain and stability? Oh, I could probably get rid of one of you guys for this. Construction speed? Yeah, I'll give it. Okay, very well. Okay. Uh, opening auto shops. If we're to continue backing around the land, why not open up the little shops for us repairing our fuel? Roaring through the Wyoming area. Our dominance in Wyoming has scared up a lot of local raiders. With great thanks to the ripping and roaring of a motorcycle bike, now we ride free and re ride uh, together across the steps without so much of a care. It's taking longer than I thought it would be. Of course, we're fighting with infantry, what do you expect? Expect better, that's right. Those are pretty thick. planning done. See what we can do the better way. Open up some more auto body shops too. That's fine for now. Because 
we could really use a more manpower. Sure, stability would be nice too. What are we missing here? Anything? No? Okay. Looking about from Hoover Dam. Infrastructure standardization. Output and retention, yes. See what you can do. It's not going to be great. It's not going to be pretty. But it'll be something. Good. Now you cut them off. That's September. We should have them down within a month. If not, that's okay. Let's see what else we want to do next. There's a lot of here we could do. Um, yeah, that's my fault. This is this one. Let's see, because it doesn't look like it's going to be an easy war. But even if we go to war, we have no manpower. It may be unwise to go to war. But we'll try it anyways, because we can. This is the how I'm worried most about. But it looks like they're holding out for now, which is a great thing. 33 ships, wow. All screens, not good. Ratchet tats. What are your tats like? Well, they're pretty ratchet. Start killing themselves even more. Good. A lot of survivors of chem trade. Chems are part of the con lifestyle. We can't destroy them. They're a foundation of our tribe. I'm glad his cronies can't force great cons to do anything. Embracing chems improper. Well, chems and the sales such are how we've always done things. We're not stopping just because someone has to nicely knock it off. I mean, Rowdy Cons, oh, that'd be good to get rid of too. Oh, there's a little bit of attack, that's alright. Uh huh. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, hmm. Strange to be a father among Cons, the gods make strange plans. Ruth Crow, formerly a father of the Forefathers tribe, has found a new home with the Northern Khans. An intelligent man who understands the need for both violence and diplomacy, Crow proudly wears the story of his people woven into his hair, for we can think of no better way to honor their memory. After a meeting with the Regis, Crow now offers the skills of the Khans, ensuring that what happened to this tribe does not occur again in his new home. That's fine. Strong right flank. Breakthrough in speed. More solid attack. Max entrenchment goes up. What is not to love? Sisters of Steel is ridiculously strong. That's going to be a giant battle for us. A true test of our strength. Nice. 
costs a lot to do this, but it's alright. Most of you guys concentrate in the north here. Could you win here? Perhaps. If you could, that'd be awesome. Chem trade. Ah, uh, good. Very good. Hello. Uh, they're busy down there that I can't move any more divisions up north, which is ideal for us. Guys, really taking a lot of damage. But they're taking way more damage than I thought they would. Uh, from boys to men, millennia ago, during the reign of the old cons, boys would be trained in the ways of a warrior from a young age archery, horse riding, campaigning. If that meant the very day they became men, they were already well versed in the art of combat. We could emulate this to reduce the amount of formal training needed. So close. Anything else here? I'm gonna get some crowd control here, maybe. I don't really want any more barrage balloons. How much more freaking manpower do they have? They're almost out, which is good. More soft attack is good. Form the officer corps. A dedicated officer corps is necessary for streamlining both training and organization. The Mongols understood this and so do we. I'm the very model of an ancient major general. I have information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the Khan of Kublai. I quote the fights historical. From Yu Ling to Dao Hui Gu, in order categorical. Hey, look at that map We got a little bit. Autos and weaponsmiths, uh, new forges. Our efforts to attract artificers has borne the fruit of many good hands. Now all they need is a place to work. The least we can do is provide such a place. Yes, we get to. No, fine, hold. If you want to do that, so be it. You know what? We'll do it like this instead. You have enough here. We've lost a thousand. Wasted so many lives for nothing. We are also going to attack down here. Five divisions. Five divisions. Five, five. They have at least five everywhere. Okay, so be it. Attack right there. Right, for the party, that'd be great. 700 is not ideal. This is ideal. I'm gonna force the attack as well.
death of the ego. The Wasteland spent about the last 200 years trying to convince us that its monsters are the most brutal, unforgiving, screwed up thing on the planet. You know what I have to say? Hold my jab. That's a gosh darn challenge if they've ever seen one, and we'll be darned if we let the Wasteland win another bet. Okay, this is stupid. They should have already won by now. Keep them in place. Got to win. You've got to win, 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 win. Come on. Bingo. Now let him attack us here, maybe. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Ah, good. This is how we're going to win here. Hey man, you need anything? I can get you up, bring you down, level you up. The Gons had not too many members like Jack, soft-hearted, laid back, and a natural chemist. He is the end of his partner, Dion's Yang, responsible for keeping the Gons of the Mojave and their clients stocked with the good stuff. He spent most of his time cooking and kicking back. He didn't find the trip north all too groovy, though he'll give Rogers credit for getting them all the way through it. Much after they arrived in Wyoming, he's finding the northern Gons to be pretty cool with Daddy-O. I kind of dig his getting to hang out with the followers again. I may be a little tight, but they're all pretty sweet and remind him of his old teachers back when he first learned chemistry. Jack's not too fussed about what comes next, as long as he and Diane are together. Slaughter them as fast as you can. Get your butts in there. All your butts in here. Melissa Lewis, welcome aboard. At this point, there should be nothing they can really do to hold us back. Form the line. Get ready to strike. Could try to become an industrial juggernaut, but maybe. Rollins. With the Saffron Broken, we should do pretty okay. Especially, oh man. What's in the defense? Even here? That's pretty, pretty interesting to see. Whew. We're not going to win everywhere, especially fighting over that river still sucks. But it's better than nothing. That's good to get. More factories. We're slowly getting there. Good. Further refinement. With the skills in hands and working forges, we're running out of ways to make our equipment better. The final thing to consider is material. We gallows and impure metals should be weeded out, leaving only the purest steel. Good stuff. Good, 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 good. New cons. We need con is about all about blood. There are hundreds of tough tribal folk that fit right in with our flock. All we do is lay out the welcome mat, and before long they'll come knocking. Uh, follow the Republic. The Marshall Republic is rich in resources, evident in the way that their people have survived this long by just living off the land. The land could do much better under the hands of the Khans. It's unfortunate that the Republic cannot say the same.
building, keep building, keep building, keep building. Good, come on. They should be running out of manpower, yes. Awesome. New Kingdom might not be bad to go for, too. If all the Republic, the Legion. They're busy at war as well. Sisters of Steel. Oh, God, who do we go to war with next? Um, maybe Iron Alliance? They do have another trade node. Ruminators, Jackson, Standing Rocks, Building a Connate. Those who create the soil first carry burdens that the stories will admit, but as long as the foundations built for the next akin, weakness will be temporary and Connate forever strong. Done with our land doctrine. Very nice. Ah. Got for more stability. That'll be good. At this point, we just gotta keep beating them up like this. By the dust. I'm glad I had the middle mouse before. Danger brewing, he called it, before jotting down notes on the best approach. Despite her weary eyes, Aston could see that they were nothing good. The lowest of scum. And so she rallied the cons for war. There's the budget. That'd be great. Additional plating is nice to have. Not super necessary, but nice to have. Hey, that's pretty nice, too. Dreamer? Sure, why not? By the dust. Metal men, the north of the gang of rioters, quite unlike we've seen it before. With limbs of steel and faces filled with machinery, they're an imposing sight. Their boss, a brutal man by the name, a simple moniker of Joe Steel, is willing to do this, however, as long as we don't hold him back, we can be allies, or probably never friends. Constant grinding. Oh boy. There you go. Got him as well. They're actually pretty cool, Melissa Lewis. Um, Stoke in the fire of civilization. Uh, Eagles exile just like us. The Jacksons are fiery clan, burning with the spite and thirst for revenge. While that makes them dangerous neighbors, it also means that it's simple to negotiate with them. If we swear to aid them in return to their old home, they'll help us in return. Go to war by when? 15th of January. So we go to war now. What happens? Not bad. It's playing, okay. Go home and repair. Can two divisions hold here? Depends if they attack us. Maybe, maybe not. Oh. How many divisions do the Sisters of Steel have? 
So, you know what? Maybe we want to go back and not go to war with them. That might be a better time to go to war with these guys. Uh, the horsemen, which would be nice. Hmm. Montana's final page. Montana chapters and Enigma to Outsiders. Little is known about the recent arrival, and much less of the purpose. But the important detail stands. They horrible. They could be used by the cons. Let's talk about dreams left to collect dust. Let's give them a wake-up call. But I think I'll go into there and redo this, maybe just a little bit, to make sure we can go to war with the Sisters of Steel, because it's going to be very tough for us. We do have quite a few divisions. We've got, you know, 29. And they have up to 34, and they're fighting the Standing Rock as well. They do are they are allied with the Ruminators still. That might just give us the ability to go to war with them and beat them up, so... Let's see what happens in the next episode. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Let's continue on with the true cons. Thanks for watching, and have a great Essen rest of your day.